Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor, Department Chair. So this is going to be a demonstration of the back muscles and the muscles of the pectoral girdle. So this is a prone cadaver. We are standing on the left side of the cadaver. That is the head end of the cadaver. This is the foot end of the cadaver. So we have already incised the skin here and we are reflecting the skin. And while we are doing so, take a look at the thickness of the skin. This is the skin of the back. So we have completely reflected it. And we have exposed the complete back on the left side of the cadaver. Let's take a look at the extrinsic back muscles first. First of all, the muscle which comes to our view is this one here. This is a very powerful extrinsic back muscle. In this particular cadaver, it is very frail and fragile. This is called the latissimus dorsi muscle. This latissimus dorsi muscle, it takes origin from the thoracolumbar fascia, the outermost layer. It takes origin also from T7 to T12 spinous processes. It takes origin from the iliac crest. And it also takes origin a little bit from the lower three ribs and sometimes from the scapula. And the fibers, they go upwards and laterally. And we can see it becomes a flat aponeurotic tendinous sheet here, where my finger is located right now. This is the insertion of the latissimus dorsi. It gets inserted onto the floor of the intertubercular sulcus. This is the climbing muscle. It is supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve. It's got other actions also. Medial rotation, extension, adduction of the arm. Now we are going to reflect the latissimus dorsi. The next muscle which I want to show you is this one here. This is the trapezius muscle. Why is it called the trapezius? Because both the sides together, they form a trapezium. It has got descending fibers, middle fibers, ascending fibers. The descending fibers, they come all the way from the superior nuchal line and from the external occipital protuberance and from the ligamentum nuchae in the back of the neck. And the fibers, they descend down. The middle fibers, they take origin from the ligamentum nuchae and from the spinous process from C7. And the ascending fibers, they take origin from the C7 to D12. And they go up. And all of these fibers, they converge and they get inserted onto the spine of the scapula and the acromion process and the clavicle here, where my left finger is rotating. This is the trapezius. This is supplied by the spinal accessory nerve and now I'm reflecting the trapezius. Once we reflect the trapezius, the next muscle which comes into view, the group of muscles are as follows. We have this muscle here, which I have lifted up. This is the levator scapulae muscle, which takes origin from the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae and gets inserted onto the medial side of the medial border of the scapula. Then we have this muscle here. This is the rhomboidus minor, which gets inserted onto the base of the spine. And then we have this muscle here. This is the rhomboidus major, which gets inserted along the medial border of the scapula. These three muscles, they are supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve. And they are responsible for wielding a sledgehammer. And if this nerve is injured and these muscles are paralyzed, the scapula will be deviated naturally. Now I'm going to reflect these muscles. And I'm going to show the next muscle, which is under them. This shiny aponeurotic sheet that we see here, this is the sinatus posterior superior. And we can see the lateral fibers are fleshy, the medial fibers, they become shiny white aponeurotic. This is the sinatus posterior superior. This is an accessory muscle of respiration. It is supplied by the intercostal nerves. Now let's come further down. We have another equivalent muscle right below. And I'm going to lift it up now. This is the serratus. My assistant is doing a wonderful job of lifting it up. This is the serratus posterior inferior. And here also we can see the lateral fibers are fleshy and the medial fibers are shiny white upon your rotic. This is also an accessory muscle respiration. The serratus posterior superior is responsible for elevation of the ribs. The inferior is responsible for depression of the ribs during forced respiration. They are supplied by the intercostal nerves. So all the muscles that we have demonstrated till now are the extrinsic back muscles. Before I go to the next section of this video, I want to just tell you one more thing. If I were to put these muscles back, the rhomboids muscle, the trapezius, and the latissimus dorsi, 
we find that there is a triangular space. This triangular space is referred to as the triangle of auscultation. Historically, this was the place where clinicians used to put their stethoscope to auscultate for the lung sounds. But that is not so practically used all the time, but it is of academic importance. This triangle of auscultation is bounded by, inferiorly bounded by the latissimus dorsi, medially it is bounded by the trapezius, and laterally it is bounded by the medial border of the scapula, and part of the floor is formed by the rhomboidus major, which I had mentioned earlier. So therefore, this is the triangle of auscultation. In this particular dissection, we have highly exaggerated it, so, but this is the triangle. Having mentioned all these things, now let's come to the next point in our dissection. If you notice, I'm pulling at some muscles here. These are the flat muscles of the abdomen which go forward because this is a prone cadaver. The transversus abdominis muscle and the internal oblique muscle, they take origin posteriorly from a tough aponeurotic sheet. And you can see I'm pulling it here. That tough aponeurotic sheet is here. This is called the thoracolumbar fascia. What we have done, we have now split open the thoracolumbar fascia to show you the layers. This is one layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. This is another layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. And we have separated them out. This is the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. There is a middle layer in front of this. And between the posterior layer and the middle layer, we have this bundle of muscle which my assistant has lifted up. This is the powerful erector spinae muscle or the sacrospinalis muscle. This is the one which you can feel as a thick ridge on either side of your vertebral column when you feel your back. This is the one which is a postural muscle which is responsible for maintaining the erect posture. This is an intrinsic back muscle. This is a true back muscle. This is type 1 red muscle. This intrinsic back muscle, erector spinae muscle, is further subdivided into three bundles, a lateral group, an intermediate group, and a medial most group. The lateral group is called the iliocostalis. Why is it called iliocostalis? Because it takes origin from the iliac crest, and the fibers, as it goes up, they give slips to the ribs. That's why it is called iliocostalis. And depending on where it is located, it is called iliocostalis lumborum, iliocostalis thoracis, etc., etc. Then the medial group, the intermediate group, this is the longismus. This is also takes origin by means of this strong, tough, tendinous sheet. And the fibers, they also give slips to the ribs and they go all the way up, right up to the base of the skull. That's why it is called longismus. And we can see some of the fibers through this here. And the medial most, which you cannot see clearly here, that's the spinalis. The spinalis does not take origin from this tendon. It is located near the spinous processes of the vertebrae. That's why it's called spinalis. These three together are the erector spinae muscles. They are the ones which are responsible for maintaining the posture. These are the true back muscles because they are located between the layers of the thoracolumbar fascia. And you can see that clearly here. They are supplied by the dorsal ramispinal nerves and they act directly on the vertebral column. If we remove this, we will see another group of muscles between the transverse process and the spinous process. They are called the transverso spinalis muscles, which are proprioceptive in nature. They do not act to move the vertebral column. And they are further subdivided into semispinalis, multifidus, and rotators. What we cannot see here, but if we were to see it further up and dissect it out in a right posture, we will see two flat muscles, which are called the splenius capitis and the splenius services. They are also intrinsic back muscles. But we cannot see that in this dissection here. Having mentioned all these things, now let me mention a few quick clinical correlations. Whenever we have any back problems, vertebral column problems, we have back pain. So therefore, these muscles, apart from maintaining posture, they also act as proprioception. They send impulses to the brain and let us know the position of our back. And if there's any pathology, they go into spasm, and that's what causes back pain. So therefore, back problems are a very big problem throughout the world, especially in elderly people or people who have got a poor posture. That is one important clinical correlation pertaining to the intrinsic back muscles. These big muscles, extrinsic back muscles, namely the left latissimus dorsi and the trapezius, 
they are used for myocutaneous flap surgery by cosmetic and reconstructive surgeons. So these are some of the points which I wanted to mention to you about the extrinsic, intrinsic back muscles and the muscles acting on the pectoral girdle. Since we are already on this, before I conclude, I just want to draw your attention to one small structure here. This is the teres major. And this muscle above that is the teres minor. So therefore, this small triangular space is called the triangular space bounded by the teres minor above, teres major below. And we can see some blood vessels running through that. These are the branches of the circumflex scapular artery, which participate in the scapular anastomosis. Scapular anastomosis is an important anastomosis between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery. It provides a collateral circulation. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyar signing out. Vansh Patel is my camera person and MD1 students are my assistants. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.